put it. Good morning, everyone, by the way. And I could gather, I was running around earlier. Yeah, good morning. Sabah and Noor. Sabah and Noor. حتى أنا اليوم فرشت وما استوعبت إنه اليوم في كانت أول خرجة إن ثلاثة مرة متحمسة أشتري حليب من سوبر ماركت ما تخيلت في حياتي يجي اليوم اللي أتحمس صغيرة دور على دور على خرجة تخرج لي فيها من جد سوبر ماركت فن يلا مارو بس دحين الناس كتير عندهم كده شوية فوق إنه يخرجوا Yeah, صح انا I wanted to break out of that. Um, I'll share the screen من دحين. واضح كل شيء؟ Yeah. Okay. Uh, we post for the story for Instagram and we're starting? Just yeah, yeah. Okay, طيب. I'll post. بالعكس مع المفروض الناس ظبطوا نومهم خلاص يعني <تصفيق> يعني بالعكس I expected انه ايوه حتى انا it's, it's amazing يعني they're even fashionably late in zoom لا wow. mm-hmm. احنا كل مره بالعكس و rushing انه يلا بسرعه ويدخلوا قبلنا وكذا بس I think انه it's النوم بعد رمضان اي الناس الصعبة النوم بعد رمضان is a disaster من جد um... هو اصلا at the end of the day a lot of people watch the youtube video mm. ف يعني ما احس انه يعني يفرق اذا دخلوا ناس دحين ولا لا they can just okay yeah so is everybody in Jeddah? Uh, yes, but occasionally Jonas men all over the world, Fajr. Because the link is sent for the Global Creative Mornings uh, newsletter. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, but Sam ma fi waiting room, صح? الناس تدخل على طول دحين. ايوه عبد الله قال لي عبد الله بس سام اتس نايس تو تو بوت ا فيس تو ذا بيرسون هو هو بين مسجين بوث فونز ايوه امس كمان صارت لخبطه وين وي ادد يو والله نو ذا ثينج از اي اي ريلي ريلي تراي تو افويد كيرينج ماي فون في البيت لايك اي 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 تراي تو افويد كيرينج ذا فون لانه خلاص لايك انفورميشن ان ذا ميديا خلاص like I just wanna check it a few times a day. I put it in a place and then I come back and I, and I check it. So I come back, there's a million of messages. So it's haram. But Sam comes back and and he's like, hi, and I'm like, hi, I didn't forget <laughs> you. I, I I know. Plan. I, I'm I'm organized. I have a schedule, but I just didn't wanna carry my phone. That's what I felt. Yeah, yeah. And I had the phone. I had the habit, right? Because whenever I was uh, doing events, I used to tie it. Events, for clean events, I used to tie it. So, كده أربطه أمشي فيه في البيت. So I'm like, no, I'm not gonna shake it. So since I came home, I was like, I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna check it twice a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. whenever you have your phone with you, nothing important pops up. Just when you see TV for five minutes, everything is gone. And this is why we carry it. This is why we carry it. And when I was in mood, I organized them. My parents. I mean, I was in. I live in Dubai. I. I. My. My method of uh, fighting boredom is organizing. So I decided to organize my parents' house. تخيل يعني مكتب بابا وكله كله كله طلعت كل شيء فاي ام ان ذات وقاعد احط ليبلز واحط 
papers. So I just I go into organization. I love organizing, and then I check my phone. Had up. Coffee time is like hi. Yeah. Um. Okay, so um, I think we have any a good number to start with is a. Uh, already we have someone raising their hands already. Yeah, yeah, Abdullah, Abdullah Gari. Please, I was gonna be good and hi, but yani. Hi. Hi, Abdullah. Do I lower your hand or not? Mara, I love yeah, having control for Zoom. Hagrazana. She has so many cool features. Authority. Don't power trip, Alena. <laughs> Um, so how was the quarantine in the real world? The 10 days. Um, Shufi, I, I, I went into, so I was already in quarantine, self-isolation for Dubai, mm-hmm. 50 days. Mm-hmm. Already. Yeah. I got sick twice and in between I was worried. Mm-hmm. Already two weeks, two weeks, and then there was one week, two weeks, two weeks, and then there was 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, two weeks and a half, almost three weeks. It was like 50 days and I was in the already. So I had lots of time to think and organize my thoughts in what I want to do when I come back. But the 10 days between Jeddah, uh, between the, uh, Dubai and Jeddah, this was a bit of like, you're in a room and I appreciate it because they want to control who goes yeah. in that. You're, you, huh? yeah. you're in a room and then uh, you have to wait. I mean, usually I'm going to like the first swap and then the swab was like the, the stick that they shove up your nose yeah, and yeah. they twist it. That's um, not good. It is, but it's a necessary pain that you need to do for the greater good. خلاص, I don't mind that. But still, يعني, I'm pacing for the Like, I, I, you know, touch the swab. Touch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch, touch, touch. And I started drawing as well. Uh, uh, you find good. ways to keep, yeah, you find ways to keep. To um, uh, anyway, and then I, 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 I decided to check, to, to, to check uh, every, every day two people in my phone book that I haven't spoken to in a while. But the thing was called I or J. Oh, yeah, nice. Come on, alphabetical. Cool. Eh, well, I'll open the phone of the like, oh, who is oh, this number? Come on, I'm going to show you the things. Do you want to get to the list before we finish? It's almost over. It's almost over, but it's a good habit. It's a good habit to. to, to talk to people and then uh, I do my Spanish lessons every day like mm-hmm. 10 minutes because um, you find ways the only thing that is in it I I'm very like sporty like mm-hmm. I'm used to so, muffy sports and I'm not a, I'm not a gym. yeah yes I'm not a gym person and I'm not a I'm, I'm not a workout at home person but I'm struggling with, but I'm very lucky. And I managed to come home after I cleared, I got the two negative tests, and finally, Kelly grew like, You can go home now. It's an ahsas. Yeah, unbelievable. And then you fly in the plane, you put ahad in masks and spacing, and it's just incredible. And it's, 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 um, it's an experience. I never imagined. Yeah. And that's they're forced oh, was, to work out, they're forced to do the work out. There's no other activity in life is allowed to do the work out. So everyone is going to do the work out. But it scared me, it scared me once. I saw the meme like, uh, uh, many people, even if they didn't see the activity in the world. Exactly. Subhanallah, they're going to do the work out. Exactly, once. That's good. Inshallah, I'll give them to complete them. I think, I think, هذا الوقت حيعلم الناس مرة كثير وحي it will it will either help you develop good habits or bad habits and then انتي you have to decide which habits you choose يعني النوم اللي تقلب ليل نهار 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 لا نهار okay قيم توني تقلب ليل نهار 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 is a very unhealthy and you need to be out with the sun you need to be out your melanin needs to develop فكل هذا حي حقيقي حيطلع على <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna, it's a lot of um, mawahib, uh, good habits, bad oh. habits, for sure. It's interesting. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to start on time. 
ولا اي لايك ستارتينج اون تايم انا انا ما الصراحه اي ريلي دونت يعني مو انه اي دونت كير اذا احد اتاخر بس احس يعني الناس اللي جو بدري واحد اثنين في هنا اوكي امال قبل ما نبدا ميوت ايفري ون ذن يو كان ستارت اه هاو دو اي ميوت ايفري ون كل حد عندك الباور بس ام اي نيد يور سبورت في الباور اي اكتيف بارت اوف ذا بارتسبنت صح I don't deserve this premium account. Um, <laughs> um, oh, تحت ما في بار تحت تحت ما عندي بار عندي فوق بار مكتوب شات اوكي okay, هو البار الفوق في بارتيسيبنتس في مكتوب في اضغط عليه ميوت اول يس اوكي هي الرزان حطيته فوق ولا نحط تحت بس اوكي يا اوكي اوكي سو بس انا اتكلم يي لا حرام اوكي ام يس يو ار ان ميوتد دقيقه لما بس اوكي سو السبيكر ما هو راضي يتشال منا الميوت يا ام ام فاين <laughs> okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you for being on time. Um, the presentation, I think the problem is the computer, but fine, whatever. There you go. Um, Shukran everyone who came. Shukran to the people who gave you the time. I don't see the names, but thank you. Shukran. <laughs> Okay. I'm not sure if I froze or not. Uh, just, just for one second, because you're good. Okay, good. Um, whenever people ask me about my story and are curious about where everything started, uh, my love of adventure and the outdoors started in this garden right here. I'm in my parents' house where I grew up, and this is the garden where I fell in love with the soil and the sky and, and every aspect of being um, free and being uh, uh, like messy in the mud um, and everyone thinks I have this this crazy story about why I started mountains but it really didn't start with something huge it started with the belief that one day I will be an adventurer and one day uh, I'm gonna live my biggest dreams one day um, and that little little uh, belief that every child usually has if you ask children if when they are uh, in, in pre preschool if you ask them what do you want to be it's always big bold things it's always astronaut it's always you know these crazy things that you wouldn't imagine and then once you get into later in your life and you ask them what are the things you want to be they become smaller so the reason why i continued my passion is because i didn't let go of that little child's dreams um, i was never afraid to dream big uh, and and my love of nature was the driving force behind it. Um, so, uh, as all of you have, uh, she just mentioned, I was born in Jeddah. Uh, at some point in my life, uh, I left for university, studied, worked. I loved my job. I loved everything I did. But there was always this sense that I was destined for more. There was always this pull towards uh, the outdoors that was so strong. Uh, as soon as I finished work, I would take my, 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 my gear and go directly to the closest beach and play volleyball. Um, for the weekends, uh, I, I, did dive, I did my dive master program, which is the fifth level in school diving because I wanted to dive. Um, I went horseback riding. So I always found ways to get in touch with nature. And I think that's what made me a more creative person. I think that's what made me a more bold person. Um, I feel like the more you get engrossed in nature, the more you get emboldened by it. I can't explain it better than that way. Uh, for, for example, dive, diving. Diving is a great example. I did my first dive when I could barely carry my tank. And the person that put the tank on my back was my mom. And mama, my mom and my dad. I, was, I have pictures. I was, the tank was almost as tall as me. It was in Turkey. It was this tiny, scrawny kid. I couldn't even carry the tank to the, to the dive point. So the instructor had to carry me and I had my very first dive card. 
And then I continued to dive and dive and dive and dive until I became a dive master. And if I didn't have issues with my ears, I would have continued to become an instructor. So that's just something that you can do in your backyard that's adventurous and in nature. Because a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I want to do this, I want to be adventurous, I want to climb, I want to do, but I can't, I can't travel. And I ask them where, you know, to Minfan, you really have a jet, you have a at other parts of Saudi Arabia, you have a gold mine and the com and the com a wealth of locations that people all around the world we pay really good money to come and explore because not many people have explored it. So sometimes the most important thing is you do is look in your backyard, literally. And Anna, this is my where I grew up. But most of us don't see that. We want to go barra. There's lots of stuff in your home, and if there isn't. Explore it, be the champion for it. One of the greatest regrets I have is not being able to explore Saudi like I wanted in the beginning of my career. One of the biggest things that I feel that I'm sad about is that there's a beautiful, there's a, a huge amount of wealth, Jamal Tabir and Nafsaudiyya. And after I shot my program last year, I did two months of, of going around Saudi. Uh, the program is called Lafat al Mamaka, yes, self promotion, but I love this project. We shot it in the summer, guys, in August and September for two months. And it wasn't the studio. So very proud of this project. And during that project, I did two months of going all around Saudi. And I never imagined how beautiful Saudi is. And it's the same for your own countries. Every single person I speak to, I ask them, where do you come from? They tell me where they're from. I say, oh, I wish I can go somewhere else. But I tell them, I want to go to your country. Do you know what I mean? We always have that sense of it, the grass is greener. So back to the, the beginning of my Monte career. Sorry, I jumped forward. Um, and I, I always felt like, can he shade that's calling me? And I didn't know what it was. And that critical moment in my life, I almost shut that noise off. I almost said, Siti, what do you want? You have a great job, you're comfortable, you're happy. What, what else do you want? And if I didn't ask that question, I wouldn't be talking to you today. If I didn't challenge myself, to find out what are the things that I wanted more in life. Because one of the most uncomfortable, comfortable positions to be in is sitting down in a place that is completely comfortable. And it's uncomfortable to be in that position because you don't explore, you don't achieve half the quarter of what you're capable of achieving. So sometimes it's not good to be comfortable. So I got comfortable and then uh, the the big, uh, the big um, wall, or in my case, it was a challenge, was the cultural uh, uh, expectations. Okay, so into how old are you now? So now it's time for you to settle down and get married. And I wasn't ready at the time. I mean, no offense to everybody. Of course, I would love to get to find Mr. Wright and you know have little knees that drive me crazy, like how I drove my car. I would love that one day. But um, I didn't feel like I was ready at the time. I didn't feel like that moment in my life, I was ready. Uh, so I wanted something different, I wanted something new. And that's when I decided to find something in nature that would satisfy that, that would answer that question of what more do I want. Well, SubhanAllah, I nearly gave up, I nearly said, this is too much. And uh, I think because I opened myself to the universe, I think because I knew I had something that I was destined to do, I, I was, open. I wanted any information, any, any advice, any suggestions, um, anything, anything. I was researching online. I was trying to find something. SubhanAllah, randomly, uh, uh, one of the, a girl who was sitting in a group, I can't remember uh, where we were, but I remember who was in the group. It was a group of Ramadan tent, you know, it's a big Ramadan tent, Emirat, and everybody comes and sits down. So we were sitting in a big group, but this girl comes and she says, I've decided to climb Kilimit, she, the girl. She's going to climb Kilimanjaro. And uh, at that moment, first of all, I looked at her. She wasn't even talking to me. I told her, what's Kilimanjaro? She said, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mountain in Africa. And Anna, I honestly thought Kilimanjaro was a fruit. I really thought Kilimanjaro was a fruit. I had no idea what it was. Yeah, but isn't that a fruit? She's like, no, it's the highest peak in Africa. And the more she spoke about it, the more I loved that idea of going on an adventure. To Tanzania and just like climbing a mountain why not so that's where the idea came from and again uh, we are our worst critics I was like really 
you're going to go climb a mountain in, 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 in Tanzania and your parents are telling you it's time for you to settle that. Like, really? are you really going to do this? And again, like those doubts and those, those things, we're, we are kind of programmed to, before you even let other people criticize it, you criticize yourself. So I said, oh, maybe this is not going to be a good idea. But I loved it. I loved the fact that I was, I might be able to pack my bags and go on this adventure. I've always wanted to be an adventurer, right? So I decided to finally tell my father because please remember, because when I say this story sometimes to people that aren't from the Middle East, when I tell them I had to tell my father, they say, why? Why? It's because it's part of our culture. You can't just go and, and, and you know, you know, do your thing and then tell him, send him a picture when you're in a tent. You can't just do that. You have to, I have to tell him. And if I'm being completely honest with you all, I was still in the beginning of my career, so I couldn't afford going to Kilimanjaro. So I, I also needed his help to, <laughs> to help me go. So it was a bunch of different reasons, but mainly it's because I respect his opinion. I wanted to come. So finally, I decided to call him. And again, that little voice that, that negates the loud voice that says, go on this adventure was like, are you really gonna ask him? And you obviously know which voice won. So I decided to call my dad. Uh, I, I joke, I say, alhamdulillah, that was not a face-to-face. -face. It was like, he was in Jeddah, I was in Dubai. It wasn't, it was a phone call, because I think I, his face would have been too much for me. I called him and I said that uh, I've decided to find the high speak in Africa and it's in Tanzania and ya haram. I think, I think he just, I think he didn't, and he was like, no. He just said no. He just flat out said no. And I think in that moment, he was like, oh, oh like she's, she's up to something. And I, and I got so angry that he said no to me because um, the same per he's the same person that taught me that I can live my dream and be adventurous and be outgoing and be all these things. And he said no. And I knew it was because he was worried. I mean, any dad any father if his daughter comes up to say hey i want to go to tanzania and live in a tent for you know x amount eight days and climb the mountain any dad would say no please add to that layer that he's saudi he's arab and i'm his youngest daughter so it wasn't the most you know easy conversation to have but i wanted it so badly because like i said that sense of wildness and nature and that, that sense of being in something as grandiose as kilimanjaro was just so alluring to me I wanted to do something that was mine. I wanted to do something that was my own. And I won him over eventually. Trust me, it wasn't easy. He literally thought I was losing it. He thought that I was under pressure, get, wanting to get married and, you know, suitors. Hagiga Haram, my dad was like, go to London for shopping or do anything else. Like, just, why, why do you want to live in a tent? And then when I finally, he finally um, gave me his blessing. He literally called me and he said, okay, you want to climb this mountain, you do one mountain, like one mountain, and you need to explain to your mom why you don't shower for eight days, <laughs> because there isn't a shower in, in Kilimanjaro. And finally, after I got my mom and my dad accepted, uh, their acceptance, I went off and I, I started a, a, this crazy chapter in my life that now has become a huge chunk of my life. I went to the Kilimanjaro without much expectation, without much, without much training. I mean, I was so ill-prepared. I was so not aware of what mountaineering is that I went and bought my, my jacket from this cute little shop in, Mall of, in Dubai Mall that had like gold buttons and stuff because I didn't, I thought it was a hype. And I took this jacket and I went on to the, climbed this mountain and I got severely you know badly hit by the cold uh, I, like I said I was not prepared I was very lucky that I have a sports background so I was physically okay but my fingers I was I was blue I had like, a really horrible experience but it was amazing that horrible experience as painful and as as uncomfortable as what as I was and I literally I have pictures I was blue. I was blue and I had ice in my eyes. So for a good chunk of Kilimanjaro, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know or have climbed Kilimanjaro, uh, when you reach to Stella Point, uh, you usually get there by sunrise. So 
this is what I experienced. And I want to explain it this in detail because that's the moment where my life changed. So I imagine I couldn't see. I had ice in my eyes. I was holding the backpack of my teammate in front of me and the, my teammate behind, behind me was holding my backpack to make sure that we're walking together. You couldn't see. I couldn't see. I, it was completely blurry. But when the sun started to come up, I could feel where the sun was. I could feel the, the rays. So I kept facing the sun. I kept facing the sun, trying to get the snow out of my eyes. And then finally, when the snow melted and I looked at what I, where I was for the first time, it was breathtaking. It looked like there were waves that were frozen in time. And they were clouds. That were, they looked like waves that were hitting the sides of the mountain. And I was above it. I was above the clouds I was above everything and it just there was a sense of belonging there was a sense of purpose and a return to nature that I had never experienced before maybe something similar when I do school at dives and I see a, a site with un, like untouched coral and beautiful colored fish that come up to you because they, they think you are a fish because they, you're, they're not used to humans so I felt that same the same sense of pure nature touching me and I was forever changed. I, I knew that this feeling, I knew that this will not be the last time how I, I would feel this way, how I tasted uh, what, what a summit feels like. Um, and that's when I, when I decided that I'm going to climb mountains. Of course, I can, again, having the idea to climb mountains and then doing it is completely different, you know, again, Saudi and a uh, girl, and this is, this is, at least for everybody that doesn't know or joining in, this is before it was cool to climb, this was like six years ago, this is before it was, oh, Saudi people are Arabs are climbing, this was six years ago, way before it was cool, um, so it wasn't easy, so I came back from Kilimanjaro, decided to climb, and as soon as I walked into my mom's house, I, horrible, like, wind burn, like, I looked terrible, Walked in with the biggest smile. My parents were like, okay, what is she going to do now? And they were right because I couldn't stop. I continued to climb. I continued to do uh, one mountain after the other, after the other. And trust me, they, they, they become more beautiful and more dangerous and more alluring because they're completely different. They're completely different train, terrain, culture, background. And then um, just when I thought I reached the you know, craziness, because I did Kilimanjaro, and then I started to do hikes and trails, and then I got invited. I had the honor of being invited to be part of the, 10 Saudi women, the first 10 Saudi women to go to Everest Space Camp under the patronage of Princess Rima Ben Benda, who was a huge inspiration for me. Uh, she sponsored us to do this hike to base camp uh, for breast cancer awareness. So I was honored to be selected and, and accepted in the team, and I, I went on the hike. And I thought that was going to be my last hurrah. And I'm going to let go of, of adventures and climbing because again, in the back of my head, as much as, as bold as I am, I still had the sense of, you know, you have to do what people want. It's, you still fall, you know, we all do that sometimes. And I thought it was going to be my last hike, right? So I, I went on uh, to Everest Base Camp. I, I started hiking, amazing team, uh, beautiful scenery. But there was one particular turn. So Everest is is in a is in a, 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 a terrain. Well, many many mountains line up around Everest, and then there's Everest. So in order for you to get to base camp, you have to leave through different mountains. So as I was doing that, as I was going through the different uh, city, uh, towns, uh, you get a glimpse of the mountain. You get you see Everest from far away, and I've seen it on TV. I've seen it in pictures. I've seen it in different. Uh, um, you know publications but one particular bend one particular turn and anyone that has that base camp knows like you go you, you weave around mountains right before we got to base camp you see everest and it just it was picturesque and i saw everest for the first time i saw that mountain with my own eyes for the first time and it it hit me like a ton of bricks it, my mom jokes she says, Raha ya Rab, inshallah, one day you look at a man, same way you looked at that mountain. I hope. I hope one day you fall in love like that mountain. And in a way, she was right because I fell in love with the idea of being able to stand on the highest mountain in the world. I fell in love with that, that crazy idea of being able to climb that mountain. 
So I hatched this crazy plan in my mind to climb and train myself to be ready uh, enough for the next season. Because I knew that if I didn't do it next year, my father would really like, khalas. So came back from Everest, a base camp, decided to climb. Of course, I had to email climbing companies to apply, right? And if anyone, by the way, please, anyone listening, if you need any advice, hiking advice, trailing advice, climbing advice, please contact me on social media. I have done all the mistakes. Please don't do them. Ask me and I'll help you. I'm happy to help you. So I contacted these companies. And can you imagine six, seven years ago? Uh, hi, my name is Hamhadak. I come from Saudi Arabia. I would like to climb Everest next year. Can you imagine like the climbing company looking at me, my, C my climbing CV that had only uh, Kilimanjaro and Everest Base Camp on it? And of course they were like, um, okay, Ms. Moharek, thank you for application, but you really need experience. So they came back to me with a list of around, I think, 10 or eight mountains that they suggested I can do within that season. Because there's different mountains in different parts of the world that you can climb on and off season. Uh, for example, there are mountains in Mexico and in, in that part of the world that you can climb off season. So they gave me the list of these mountains and I said, okay, so this month I want to do this, this month I want to do that. And then while I was doing these, my planning, I realized that they were the seven summits, basically. The, the mountains that I was planning to climb were part of the seven su summits. I had no idea what the seven summits were, but when I started like looking at the, the, the uh, suggestions, and that's when the idea was like, ha, huh, since I'm going to climb you know, for training, I might as well finish them all, right? So I decided to, to do the seven summits as I was doing the research. And because the majority of mountains that are well, uh, uh, visited are the ones part of the seven summits. So they have the better companies and better uh, preparation. So I said, okay, seven summits, it sounds like a good idea. I want to travel, I want to adventure, and I want to be, you know, more closer to nature. This sounds like a cool idea. Of course, ideas are good in paper. By the time I hit my third or fourth mountain, I was completely broke <laughs> because I put all, all my savings the deadline for came, I couldn't afford it. I couldn't pay for it. No one wanted to sponsor me. Please remember, this is six, seven years ago before it was cool to sponsor uh, people like me. No one, no one even wanted to look at the presentation. Saudi girl doing what? <laughs> like she wants to go climb what? Um, and in the end, the biggest poetic, you know, the, 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 this moment, the, the justice or the biggest twist in my, in, my, in my life story, I couldn't go to Everest because I couldn't afford it. In the end, when I pulled out my application, guess who was the person that decided to send me? Which is really <laughs> hilarious that the same man who was really worried about me and really like, when I told him I wanted to climb Everest, he, he literally looked at my mom and said, what did I do with this, with this girl? The same man who was so completely against it was the guy that was, was, was the driving force behind me. My father decided to send me. Um, he literally looked at me, he's like, I know you, you're stubborn. If you don't go <laughs> now, you'll go later. So I might as well help you in this journey. And I admire him so much for joining me in my madness because I wouldn't have been able to do it without my mom and my dad. Because mountaineering is quite ex experience, uh, ex expensive. You need a lot of experience. And you can't ju it can't be a vanity project where you say, I want to go climb Everest and just decide to climb Everest. You have to put the time in because you can really put a lot of people in danger. So I wanted to put the time in. Plus, I was one of the first Arab females to go on the mountain. I wasn't going to let them have a bad impression about us. I was going to show up not knowing what I was going to do. I, I had that in my mind. I'm like, you need to show up. You need to have your A game because I didn't want them to see a Saudi girl not knowing how to put her crampons on or not doing crevasse rescue and then thinking, oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. So I did the training. I got I, – I, and some of the training, by the way, was insane. Like, I had to do uh, – uh, a rescue and uh, um, ice training in Antarctica. So that was amazing. And of course, it was one of the summits as well. I did uh, survival training in Seattle. I did high altitude training in Aconcagua. And of course, being able to go to these amazing places is just like a dream, right? Um, and yeah, and then uh, I, I don't want to bore you all with the Everest story because it's a really long story. <laughs> We're talking about nature. But, um, but yes, th there is a sense 
I think humans, humans forget that we are primal inside. I think forget because we have become domesticated and we, we, we've become used to having this comfort, which is an important and integral part of our life. But every single person has to experience that raw feeling of being white. Every single one of us has to satisfy. Even once, I'm begging, for example, my sister, I'm begging my sister to come with me on a hike. My sister is the complete opposite of me. But I'm begging her to come on a hike because I truly believe that you will discover things about yourself that you would never imagine possible. I never imagined I'd be able to live my dream this way. I never imagined that I would be able to, to live my adventures like as I, as I did as a kid. And I never imagined that I'd have people coming up to me and saying that they're inspired by my life. I never imagined that. But it all happened because I didn't let go of that little girl's dream. It all became a reality because I didn't shut her up. I fed it. And that's, I think, a big lesson that we need to teach our kids. It's okay to have big dreams. It's okay to be different. It's okay to go out in the mud and get dirty. And I think technology is amazing. But it's kind of detaching the new generation from doing things. Do you know what I mean? Like everything has an app. Everything has a shortcut, which is amazing because it really helps our life. But it shouldn't be the number one option for you. It should be an alternative, but it shouldn't be the number one thing you go to. Do you know what I mean? Like it should be secondary thought. If you're able to do something, actually do it, do it. Because there's a sense of using your hands. There's a sense of of sweating and, and letting that, that inner um, caveman or woman come out. I, I can't explain it more than that. I've never felt so alive than I did straddling that fine line between life and death. And only those moments come out when you are pushed. And you don't have to do crazy things to be pushed. Like you don't have to, a lot of parents come up to me and say, you're making our kids wanna do the dangerous things. You don't have to push the, to the limit where it's your life. Ask yourself, what is something I've always wanted to learn? What is something that I've always wanted, a place I've always wanted to go, an experience I've always wanted to have? Some of them are as simple as trying a dish you never did. Something is as simple as learning a language. Well, it's not simple, it's complicated, but it's, it's within arm's reach. You can learn a language. And some of them are, are just in your backyard. Some of them are just around the corner. So have that sense, have that childish curiosity. Um, and don't disconnect from, from our primal need to be in nature. It feeds your soul. It feeds your mind in a way that nothing else can. Nothing. There are studies about this, about sunlight, fresh air, um, having an active lifestyle. Nothing, nothing can replace that. And um, I think, I'm, I think I'm, I've, I've gone out of, of above time now. We have a few minutes. Can someone tell me, like, timekeeper? Because I completely I forgot to put it on my phone. I got so excited. Can timekeeper tell me like how <laughs> how am I going? We started late for we're gonna have like ten extra minutes, but mashallah everyone. Yay! In a person, okay. this is actor talk with more engaged emotion, DP. So, ma, I can't. I can't, I can't take your time. Time, honestly. So, <laughs> I just I, I'm honored. Well, I'm gonna let's say I'm gonna wrap it up in like five six minutes, and then I'll give five, I'll give five minutes for Q and A. Yes. Sounds good. Yes, definitely. Um. Sorry, I get really excited when I talk about this because I, I, I've, I've met so many people that, that are living but aren't alive. So many people that smile but, but have sad eyes. So many people that just go through the notions of life and go through the notions of going from A to B but don't enjoy the journey. So if, if I'm remembered for one thing, if, if one day I am remembered, I want to be remembered for the person that lived her life to the fullest. I don't care if people don't know my name or my face. I, I really do not care. Um, if I did, I would have put on a bit more makeup when I came back from Everest when there was news. So side, funny side story. Uh, a lot of people accused me of wanting to do this for the media. So when I came back uh, from Everest, people were filming me in the airport. I had no idea that they were in the airport for me. So they were filming me in the airport. And please remember that it was after two months of Everest. I didn't have a proper shower or a proper anything of facial, nothing for two months. And they took pictures of me and it was all over the news. I came back to Saudi. I had the newspaper clippings um, to show my mom. Uh, Look, mom, I was in the news and whatever. So I'm showing her in the news and she's looking at them. And then she looked at me and she was tearing up. And she was like, she's tearing up. So I looked at her and I'm like, mom, why are you? I'm here. I'm fine. I'm safe. 
And she's like, I know, I'm so proud of you. You're an amazing girl, but couldn't you not put mascara? You look so bad. I mean, couldn't you not put some? And that, and whenever people tell me that I did it on purpose, I was like, trust me, I would have put mascara on <laughs> if I knew. Um, but that's just a funny story I wanted to share. Um, do things for you, do things for yourself. Forget about the fame, forget about anything else. Do things for passion and I guarantee you it will come back tenfold. I never imagined that my love of sport and my affinity and my tie to nature would lead me to have a career. I have, I've done a travel show, I've shot for top brands like Dior and LV, I worked with Nike, I worked with uh, Lipton and Coke and Pepsi and all of these brands that I grew up idolizing. Um, so if I, if I went down the path that was more, that was more uh, paved, which, which was an amazing opportunity and an amazing, I love my job. I don't think I would have achieved the, the full capacity of who I was. I don't think I would have been able to, to feel that sense of accomplishment that's mine. And I always tell people, and I'll end on this note, I always tell people that um, I, I understand that not everybody can climb that, that Everest. I understand that not everybody can climb the Everest that's in the Himalayas that's of rock and ice. I understand that. It's not everybody. But I guarantee you that every single one of you has an Everest to climb. Every single one of you has a mountain inside them, whether it's a dream job or a dream relationship. And sometimes that's a dream, having a partner and kids. And that's my dream one day. And a lot of people think that I'm, I'm like anti-marriage. I'm not. And my mom is always in the background saying, can you please explain to them that you are not anti? I'm not anti-marriage. I would love to one day. And we don't have to define what our dreams are. It can be whatever it is. But every single one of you has a summit of Everest inside them. I urge you to find it. I urge you to put yourself more into nature, to feel things, not just to experience them as they go. Um, I promise you, if, if, if I could, a girl from Jeddah who was born in Hayaroba, who, you know, has I, the only ice I saw before that was in the fridge. So if I managed to stand on top of the highest mountain in the world, at some point I touched the sky and then I went and I climbed the seven summits of each continent just to make sure that no one can tell me what I can and cannot do as a, as a human being, as a, a woman, as, as, as any, 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 any category that people put you in. Do not let that be a barrier. Let it be a stepping stone for you to go above it. Don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do. And I promise you, your dreams can come true. You just need a lot of work. Oh, sorry, I get really emotional when I talk about my journey and I get really like all flustered, but um, it, I just wanted to share it with you and I'm, I'm very thankful for the team, uh, especially Bassam, who I drove nuts, <laughs> sorry, but um, I really appreciate giving me a chance to share my story like this. And um, I'm going to open it up for Q&A because uh, I feel like sometimes maybe I get so ex I get excited, but if you have any questions, please be free to ask. Uh, don't leave me hanging. And if you are shy, then please contact me on my social media. My handle is Raham Harad, very creative. It's just my name. And I will, I will help you uh, out, uh, as much as I can. But just forgive my spelling and, and mistakes. I'm a disaster. In my name, so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's been an amazing talk. You can see the emotion behind it. And that was the best part. Um, personally, I'm, I'm not an adventurous person when it comes to like nature and going out, but like metaphorically in life, I am. But um, I've always wanted to try, but my parents are extreme. What is it? I want to try Kulshe, but my parents are both extremely protective. You want my advice with your parents? Yeah. Start with something small. What's the smallest one? What's the least ah. shocking one out of the things you want? Diving, just diving. Scuba diving? Yeah. Take your mom. Um, Take your mom. My parents are both not to dive. doctors. So the uh, means they're both emergency doctors. But they've seen the say, worst. Just, take her away. just uh, no. let, her, let her have a look. Let her have a look. Mm. And then don't, don't, don't do a deep dive. Do a, do, a, do a shore dive where she can still see you. My, my advice is always to, to, do, to start small. Start, start with something and then that. I, I climbed Everest with this concept. Trust me, it works. So start with start with something that they can they can still control. Because to I them, it's the regular swimming. Like, when you touch the water, it's a 
شي فيك شوف واحده ماما من بعيد بتسوي كذا اللي بليز تعالي لا نو ات تيكس تايم بس But our parents are, are just like any any other human being. It, it takes time for them to get used to it, and they mm-hmm. they don't like the unknown, and they don't like not being able. Um, I think we have a question. I, I couldn't mm-hmm. click it on time. And to be fair, I, I never pushed the limit, honestly. But I mean, that's a good thing. I, you should. Yeah. Try. It doesn't have to be something that's super dangerous. It doesn't have to be something that's like, yeah, you need just try try a little bit. Try and I, I it's a. It's a it's an uncomfortable place to be, but you, once you cross that line, yeah. you I promise you will discover things. Uh, I, I, last year, I convinced three ladies who are completely like op- opposite to me, completely to jump to do skydiving for for an episode mm-hmm. for a TV episode. Three ladies, they have kids, they're really married, settled down, and I convinced all three to jump, and it changed their life. So I'm not saying you should skydive now. That's a bit too much. But um, take her snorkeling. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. I see the question, but I can't. I can't. Like, uh, but if, if people want to ask questions, they can raise their hands and we can unmute them. For uh, uh, now, but uh, 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 I, I don't have control. Uh, 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 wait. Uh, we can unmute. And they can unmute themselves actually, but just raise your hands. Yeah. بس في احد سال سؤال از ات از ات رير فور سعودي جيرلز تو اكسبلور فاست نيتشر اكروس ذا وورلد يعني تحس اني ديد يو يعني ديد يو في لوت اوف سعوديز نوت اني مور اند ايم سو براود تو سي ذات نوت اني مور لاست يير واز ذا ريكورد فور ذا اماونت اوف عربز ذات هاف كلايمبد ات واز انكريديبل ذا اماونت Everest, it's incredible. Not anymore. I get messages from girls all over the world, and many of them whom are Saudi or Arab, many of them send me pictures of their boots and stuff. I'm so proud to say that I am not a rarity anymore. I'm so proud to say that. Good question. Georgia raised her hand, so let's give Georgia a chance because I, I appreciate that. How do I click it? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah, I'm really inspired by your story and thank you for sharing it and your passion as well. It's so nice to see somebody so enthusiastic. I think so often people don't let their enthusiasm out. So I think that's so nice. And, thank you for your time. Um, pardon? Thank you for your time. <laughs> It's great to be here. Um, so I just have a comment and a question. So my first comment is, Um, you would think that maybe, um, like, okay, so I'm Anglo-Australian, so my background is like, you know, English convicts came to Australia 200 years ago. My family, you know, my parents are Anglo-white. They're not Arab, but they're very restrictive, actually. So I've had to push against a lot of barriers with, with them, even though, like, the stereotype maybe is different, but I feel like my parents are the same. <laughs> so I thought I'd just let you know that's the case as well. And I've done some um, some hiking. I went to Patagonia and hiked beautiful. up there. It was beautiful. beautiful. And I have a hiking buddy who I go hiking with, and she's more daring than me. And so I would just say that's a good thing, like, if you have a friend who likes to go hiking, that that's, like, For an sure. easy way to do it. So that's my comment. And my question was just whether you've doubted yourself, like when you were working out your adventure, um, um, like along the way, did you yourself at all? Yes. Like, I think doubt is healthy. First of all, it keeps a lot of reality in check, but uh, doubt that overwhelms isn't. But I, I was doubtful because I couldn't afford many of the crimes. And I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? And, you know, I, I was really worried about being able to fund it and being able to, to do it. Um, I also doubted myself. Uh, I, I didn't mention this in the, in the talk because I wanted to keep the talk nice and light, but there was a mountain that nearly broke me emotionally and mentally, which is my last mountain, Denali, the high peak in, um, in uh, North America. And I doubted that I'd go back. I did. I eventually did that finish the summit, but th- I think doubt is very normal and very healthy. It's just how you handle it that makes a difference. Um, You doubt yourself to the point where it, it hinders you and it makes you feel overwhelmed and I, I, no, I don't want to continue or does doubt help you? 
prepare more and help you have more more uh, more of a plan. Like when I doubted my, me, me being able to, to, to fund it, I started figuring out how am I going to get sponsors? How am I going to approach my dad? I actually did a presentation for my dad. I did a PowerPoint presentation for him to, to approve it because he, he was eventually my sponsor. So yes, I have a very healthy relationship with that. <laughs> Good question. And by the way, you guys have amazing hikes and beautiful terrain in Australia. I'm jealous. I love it. Thank you so much for, for, for joining us. It's, it's, thank you. it's the same thing. People in Australia say that Saudi Arabia is very exotic and people in Saudi Arabia... It is! <laughs> I told you. So we all live in exotic places, so let's enjoy I, it. I was joking. I was saying we should do an adventure exchange program. I, was, I, I want to pr present this to the government, to different governments, and do a, we do a, a study exchange program. We do a business exchange program. I want to do an adventure exchange program where we take... Six hikers and climbers from Australia, bring them to Saudi Arabia, and then we take six from Saudi, we take them to Australia, and we do an exchange program. I want to do this. I've been saying it for so many years now. Like I want to host one of these shows where, you know, how swap. I want to do that. It would be amazing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I've been getting, like, pop-ups. I don't know who, I, I, I feel a bit like, because I, I, I can't click the... the so can you tell me if there are any other questions? Because I, I, I'm not, if I don't click it, I can't see the question. <laughs> um, uh, someone is saying that it's, the, uh, it's her first time, her name is Manar, it's her first time joining Creative Mornings and she's so glad she did. It was very inspirational and a bit good luck. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Shukran, I really yeah. appreciate it. Ms. Fawzia Ibrahim, it says that uh, she, Indeed, an overthrilled and interesting explore you had. Love your narration, mashallah. May Allah bless you. The narration is. Thank you. I really appreciate the narration. <laughs> Sorry? Everyone is loving the narration of the story. <laughs> I'm glad because the, the thing is, I have, I, 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 when I started my speaking career, I never had a speaking coach or a, a teacher. And no one wanted to help me. Like, it was just. They were like, yeah, but what are, you, what are you going to speak about? So I actually taught myself, and now I do my, my speeches myself. And uh, I, I, I didn't want to write something specific for, for this specific uh, uh, Zoom call because I think if you, if you read, it becomes not yeah. as authentic. So thank you so much for appreciating I put a lot of work in it. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So. so we have a question from Qayyima. I'm going to, oh, you're unmuted. You can go ahead. Um, hi, hi everyone, and hi Raha. Uh, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your um, presentation. It's really inspiring, and um, I was really amazed because I've been following your social media since two years ago. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm always so impressed. And I've also done a bit of hiking, and I actually started my Seven Summits expedition last year. I climbed Kilimanjaro and I just want you to know that you influence um, people far and wide as, as, as wide and as far as Southeast Asia and my country because I'm from Brunei and I'm currently based in Singapore right now. I want to go to Brunei. Can you please send me a message on Instagram so we can try hopefully when this is all over. I'm dying to go. It's on yes. my list. Because um, another dream is for me to see all the countries in the world. So please, can you message me on Instagram? I would really appreciate that. And I like to go with people like people like I, I know. I mean, I book a company, everything, but I like to go with. So sorry, this is a side topic, but please message me on Instagram because um, I want to go to. Brunei. But yeah, I have to say, like everything that you said about nature and about pursuing what you love, it's all true. And once you've experienced all that then you, you will know as cliche as it, it may sound like all the things that you say it but is you feel you, it. when you when you've done it it really feels like a sort of achievement for yourself and it's it, it's the best feeling ever and it it just stays with you for for a very long time um i have two questions for you one is um do you have people doubting you and how do you deal with that and my second my second and last question is um, for um, climbing expeditions such as Antarctica and Everest, since it's requ it requires a lot of money, how mm. do you how can people deal with that financially or getting sponsors and all that? How how, okay. how can you overcome that? I'll start with the first question. Um, doubt people. Okay, uh, if you don't get take this as a as a, as a as a life lesson, if you don't get criticized, 
you aren't doing something big enough when it comes to personal stuff. Um, if you, if everybody is on your, you know, clapping for you, it's amazing. But sometimes criticism means you're shaking the boat a little bit. So I take it, I accept, uh, um, let's say 98% of the criticism I get because it's their point of view and their perspective. There's 2% that's absolutely ridiculous and trolling. Like when people comment about my hair, that I don't blow dry my hair, I find it ridiculous because my standards of beauty are not the same as yours. And I feel like I'm a champion for puffy hair. So that's just a small example. But when people criticize my actions, when they say it's against this mentality or it's against that, I respect it. And I kind of like that they, 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 they criticize me because they, it means they know I exist. It means they know that there is a Saudi woman out there that has done these things. So even when I do get criticized, I try very hard to take it in a, in a, in a boost rather than a put down. So I take them as boxes and I put it below me and I just step on top of it to go above it all. Um, I can't lie, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes when they criticize my family, when they criticize my life choices, it's very painful. But in the end, we are in control of what we let get to us or not. So I do get a lot of criticism. Now less, I have to say, like when I did this six years ago, it was like, oh my. But now with social media, I think they've seen what other girls are doing. And I, to them, a Saudi girl who's adventurous isn't so bad. So now it's not so bad. Um, but I still get criticized pretty much on a daily basis. Um, and I, I get to choose what gets to me and what doesn't. Sometimes it gets to me. But most of the times I just shrug it off and I say, yeah, I exist. So what, what's, what, are my, what did my life choice do to you? It didn't hurt you, right? As long as you're not hurting people. So... I know it's hard, but try to let criticisms uh, land softly on you. It's not easy, but uh, it happens. Uh, the second question, sponsors. I, unfortunately, um, my career as a, a, an athlete and as an individual, a known individual in the, in the region, uh, grew after I finished pretty much most of the seven summits. Before sponsor, Besides Everest being other summits, uh, base camp was camp. The summits I had to do myself. I had to fund myself. My family helped me and I put my savings on. I don't advise anybody to pay from their own money if they can't afford it to do any of these mountains because it's not a critical thing to do. You can still go hikes and trails that are very fairly priced. If you do decide to climb, have an amazing presentation with a fantastic message. Have a reason. To, t to go knocking on the companies and tell them, here's my portfolio, you need to pay for me. You need to put your name on me because I've got something special. Have something that no one else has. Try to find that, try to find that niche. Try to find that, um, that story that can touch people. Don't just go up and say, hey, I'm X person from this country and I wanna climb a mountain, no one's gonna pay you. Well, now it's even near impossible during this time, but hopefully when things get better, have an amazing presentation, and, and I don't mean graphics. I have an amazing message, an amazing purpose behind it to touch people. People are not going to open their pockets for brands. Yeah, you need to be a bankable person. You need to be a a uh, uh, a face, uh, a message that the brand wants. And you don't need many brands. You need one or two good relationships. Uh, it's not easy, but it's possible. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Good luck. So Georgia said that you should do a TED talk, which, yeah. Thank you. I did, I did one TEDx years ago, but I've never done a TED talk. I'd love to do a TED talk. I'd love to uh, one day. Um, I'm actually, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I grew up very shy, very camera shy and very people shy. I was, I was the least social of my siblings. I was always like the shy one. But um, being able to share my story with people kind of like beat the shines out of me. So I would love to do a talk. To, I would love to do a talk here in, in, in the study, yes, to, to do a, a, a TED talk for the, the people that are in the same kind of, we know when I say the jokes, do you know what I mean when I say the family jokes? But of course, I'd love to do a TED talk anywhere. Uh, we would definitely so I love to have you on an in-person creative mornings type of thing. I think that would be amazing. Inshallah, when, when, this, when everything when all this flows over. Hopefully. We can have something like dedicated to adventure. But yeah, thank you so much for that.
for the compliment. Uh, we have one last question. Just let me know. Haram, but some height up, but just let me know. <laughs> so we have one last question from Maher and, and Dejani. You can go ahead. You're unmuted. Hello. Hello. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Raha, for your uh, inspiring, such an inspiring uh, presentation. It's really inspired me. And once you hopefully, I will climb the Kilimanjaro, in, inshallah. If you need uh, advice, please let me know, really. Just yeah, message me. Uh, I'll let you, I'll give you the companies I went with, they're amazing. So, please let me know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, first thing, uh, if you want to start your adventure exchange program, please put me first one in the list. <laughs> yeah, it is. I really want to do this. Can you imagine this is a show concept? Like, don't steal it, please. Anybody who's listening, don't steal it. This is my baby. I've been trying to do this for years. Yeah, you don't have to register it under your name so nobody can steal it. I have it. to. I'm trying. I'm really trying. I really want this concept. Inshallah. Yeah. So my question is that I start exploring Saudi Arabia. So, you know, we usually live in our, our, our cities, but we don't go around Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia yeah. is a huge country, not a small country. Uh, I visited a few places, but I want from you just to tell us, what is the place that you have been there and you want to revisit again? Wow. Um, you have to understand that I did two months. I think it was one, one new city or one new location every three to four days in two months, so I, I've, I'm very, very fortunate to see a lot. Um, I think the top places would be, I want to go back to my dad's village, where my dad was born, Qariyat Abuya, I'd like to go back there um, and properly explore it. Um, my dad's from Jizan, I did a whole, a whole episode about Jizan, but I couldn't go to his village. That's one place, because it has a sentimental value for me. The other place is, I went to um, a, a village called Ghaya. This village is in, on top of an old vo vo volcanic mountain. The people left it 70 years ago. So when I went up, up to the mountain, to, to the houses in the mountain, I went with the, one of the last men who was born there. So I went up with him. It's a proper village. It's a proper farming village on a mountain uh, in Saudi. And it was so surreal to walk in these old houses that people lived in for thousands of years and only left it 70 years ago. It was really surreal. I'd love to do a proper documentary about that. Um, and also, we have a lot, of ru a lot of ruins and a lot of historic uh, 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 locations. That I, guess, yani, I, keep, I keep telling people, does anyone know National Geographic or Discovery Channel contacts? I want to invite them to come to Saudi and look at the amount of stuff. We have uh, graves that are on the mountains in my dad's Fijizan. And in the Gubur, we have graves that are in the mountain with bodies still in them that are thousands of years old, that are still on the mountains. But you need the proper team to ex excavate. So I would love to um, have one day like a, a, you know, a show about all these historic places uh, to serve here because it's truly incredible. Rare, of course, uh, 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 Al-Ula and all of these places. But Al-Ula now is being more and more uh, popular. But there are other places that are very far that I'd love to like borrow a team from one of the <laughs> travel channels and be like, please come and look at what we have. It's a gold mine. So yeah. Inshallah, I'm putting it out in the universe. Maybe I'll have another show one day. <laughs> Manifest it. I manifest. <laughs> thank you so much for your question. Okay, so thank you so much, Raha. It was an amazing, amazing pleasure. Episode. The pleasure is mine. Can't wait to have you in person. Um, so there's one thing that we do um, every event is that we take a, a group photo of everyone. So the Zoom way of doing it is that uh, whoever wants to join the photo can just enable their cameras, and we're gonna post it on our Instagram uh, feed, and you can just go ahead and tag yourself. So gallery awesome. view. So yeah, yellow. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Ah, oh, Ahmed Nasser. I see. Show food truck for Creative Mornings. I know you. <laughs> I'm trying to recognize faces. Uh, You're most welcome, Yara. I just saw a message. <laughs> All right. Uh, I always show my uh, my desk behind uh, the laptop. So today I took the extra time to kind of organize. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a mess every single time, so it's as clean as it can get. <laughs> looks great. 
Alright, let's see if we're not in the second page. Alright. One, two. Yay! Okay, so Pleasure. I think Georgia was trying to say something. Georgia, she was saying something. Just uh, if you want to do an exchange program um, with oh, I'd love to. I can help. I, Australia is one of my top locations. I mean, I've been to a lot of places, but Australia is, is very, very unique. So uh, please, uh, I don't know how we can connect. Hi, someone's saying hi from Sarah. Uh, give, please give Georgia my email. I'd love to have a chat with her. And also, I just wanted to thank Creative Mornings, honestly, for choosing me and your patience. Maya, I know I was a bit out of touch. It was a bit chaotic for me. And I wanted to thank every single person that gave us your time because really time is very valuable and my story is only as powerful as the hearts and minds it touches. So thank you for giving me a platform to, to share my, my journey. Thank thank you so much. Amazing how the, the Zoom Creative Mornings introduces to people from all around the world. We always have <laughs> people from uh, any places that you couldn't even think of. So I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, I will kind of miss this when we're back to real life. So... We can always do collaborations. There's a co-host of an Indonesia chapter. Please stay in touch with us. We can always work on something together. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I was supposed to, I was supposed to go. Uh, what's today? Today's thirtieth. I got a reminder last night. Trip to Indonesia. I was supposed to go to Indonesia Aww. tomorrow. <laughs> I was. I was like, I forgot to remove the reminder. So yes, I I love it. Um, please, everyone, stay in touch. Uh, let us know of the ideas you have, ways that we can all stay connected online from all around the world. Um, creative Mornings Jeddah and Creative Mornings Everywhere just became one big Creative Mornings community. So um, everyone is welcome. That's, the, that's the, the manifesto. So yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. Uh, please DM Pleasure. us if you have any questions, if you need support on your personal projects. We're more than happy to help you. Bus, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.